India inflation was reported today at 8.1%. As the central bank continues to battle stagflation, Shamita Deveshwa of Trusted Sources is on the line now to give her perspective. Shamita, hi, thanks for joining us. Shamita, the Reserve Bank of India has hiked rates three times since September last year to handle currency pressure and curb persistently high inflation. With a fractional decline today, can we consider these efforts to be working? Um, it's still early to say whether these measures are working. The RBI has little choice but to keep interest rates tight because what it is really working on is to contain inflationary expectations. Um, there has been a lot of criticism of the RBI for using monetary policy to tackle high food inflation. Um, but the central bank has argued back that input costs and higher rural wages are causing higher food prices. And it is this area that they're targeting, apart from, of course, second round effects of, of high food inflation. Um, the RBI has a pretty long target for getting inflation under control. They're talking about inflation getting to 6% by only 2016. Uh, that, in my view, is realistic, not overly ambitious. But at the same time, the RBI is very serious about signaling to the market participants that it needs to contain inflation and it is going to do so. The Indian economy is likely to grow by 5.6% this year, according to a report by India Ratings and Research. While this figure reflects improved global factors, recent domestic figures indicate a Q4 slowdown, not necessarily indicative of an optimistic start to 2014. Yeah, I would expect a very slow and protracted recovery, um, depending, as you said, on improved global economic conditions, as well as any bump from uh, elections if investors get excited at the outcome and optimistic about India. However, the fact is that macroeconomic vulnerabilities in India remain. Inflation is far higher than the RBI's comfort zone. Uh, growth is picking up slowly, and the increase in manufacturing activity that we've seen is also accompanied by costlier inputs. Um, there has been no sustainable reduction in the fiscal deficit, and we're also seeing uh, the latest data that shows that there's a slowdown in exports, and that's also worrying. Uh, so I'm not very optimistic about India right now. I think there are too many structural challenges and we'll have to see how the new government tackles them. Uh, most are supply side issues, so it will take a while for any immediate steps that they take um, after they come into power in, in May, June, uh, then to take effect as well. India and China are set to hold their third annual strategic economic dialogue in Beijing next week. With the two sides set to discuss bilateral economic and trade issues, can you expand on the importance of this relationship, particularly if we consider the small improvement in today's industrial and manufacturing production data? Sure, economic interaction between the two is good because they've had a politically tense relationship and border issues keep those um, tensions alive. Uh, but they are two of the world's largest economies, and we do expect increasing ec economic interdependence um, between them. Uh, China is now India's largest trading partner, and Chinese companies are very active in um, areas like India's infrastructure sector. And uh, meanwhile, Indian IT, uh, pharma, and even auto companies have been increasing their presence in China. Uh, that said, both economies are capital scarce. Uh, labor surplus economies, um, although that is, of course, changing in China. Uh, but to a certain extent, that provides some limitations to uh, to trade relationships between the two. However, these type of dialogues uh, that they're having next week are very important to build trust in a relationship that has had um, historical hostility. If we consider then this stagflation cycle of weak growth and high inflation, how does this fare for the Indian rupee? Well, despite the recent rally in the rupee and, and the far better than expected um, outcome for the current account deficit this year, which was, of course, a, a big point of worry uh, in the middle of 2013, um, the rupee is still much weaker than it was a year ago. And that's a reflection of the continued macroeconomic vulnerabilities and the stagnation environment of low growth and high inflation. Um, I expect the rupee to remain around uh, 60, 61 over the next two to three months. Great comments, Shamita. Many thanks for your time. That's all from me right now. I'll be back tomorrow with the latest press review and a look at the RBNZ's interest rate decision. Bye for now.